Randy Rain here. I'm back. And this time I have some more Tomy robots. Uh, well, one is a Tomy. One is a Tomy, but it says Radio Shack on it. And these are the Dustbots. And they both need some work. So, this is... Randy's Robot Refurbish! Alright, let's look at these. This is the Tomy version. Uh, the difference is, you can tell, the arms, they both do the same thing, come from the same mold, it's just different colored plastic. We have red here, blue here. There's a sticker that's different. This one just says Dustbot, trademark on here. This one says Dustbot, no trademark, different font. Uh, but it also says, let Dustbot Robot do those little cleaning chores of, on your desk. Um, that's different. Down here on the door, the door has embossed Tomy on here. Down here we don't. We have nothing. We have a sticker that says Radio Shack on there. On the front here, it's embossed of Tomy. And there's nothing here. And you can see the line, the cutout of the mold where they can just pull it out and replace it with the blank one or replace it with that there. So that's, that, other than that, they're exactly the same. So what's wrong with these things? Well, the original Tomy, the only thing wrong with it is the wheels. The wheels are horrible. The wheels have horrible, horrible flat spots on them. They've set somewhere, obviously, and in a hot, hot area and just melted. And so that's no good. As far as this one, this one has excellent wheels. The wheels are in a perfect working condition on the Radio Shack version. It makes a clicking noise and just kind of doesn't work quite right. That's, I don't think that's right. Otherwise it just goes in circles. And you can hear this clicking. Yeah, that's not right. So here's my plan. I'm going to take the good wheels from the Radio Shack dust spot and I'm going to put them into the Tomy here after this is cleaned up to get a perfect working Tomy version because I have the box for this as well and then with those wheels I'm going to replace the tires with my little, my special way of replacing tires, hopefully, and go in here and figure out what exactly is going wrong with this one, and get this one into at least working condition, and then this one to an original condition. So, let's get these things open. All right, I have had the Radio Shack version open and cleaned it all out and it was disgusting. Uh, I have not done that to this one and I am pretty scared. Let's go ahead and get the batteries out. They take two C batteries. Let's start with this one. Up front, it has this little wobble back and forth wheel system. They're just idler wheels, but they're made so that the thing can slide sideways. It's pretty clever how it works. And it comes apart like this. On this one is the one that's clicking. So right now I'm gonna try See if the clicking is in. There's some mechanics here or if it's in here. Let's try again. 
There we go. Huh. Interesting. They actually put a kill switch in there. Alright, so no clickety-clacky here. The clickety-clack noise is not there. It's in here. Alright, so... Let's open this one up. All robots like this, when you open them up, they're kind of gross inside. Because they're kind of old. But this one's a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. This one... Yeah, is pretty freaking disgusting. There we go. Can we see the nastiness in there? All right, pause for a minute. Let's clean this out. All right, well, this is pretty disgusting. Even I can't even wipe it out, so I'm going to have to take the rest of this apart. First of all, this is the vacuum impeller here. It's the only thing with a different screw, so that comes off like that. It uses the same screws throughout them all. This Tommy was smart like that. Two more of the same screws. There we go, and now it all falls apart. All right, to show you what's, I'm sure what's inside here. Um, not an LED. This is a light here. There's a coming off of the the motor here. Comes up to this worm gear, which transfers the direction. So now we have the gear spinning this way, and this little nub is offset, which makes his arms move back and forth. Uh, it also has a little offset section here that pushes these two pieces of copper together as a switch to activate the light. This is the kill switch here that so if the bottom is taken off it won't turn on because this has to be pushed down for it to work. It's just another switch. That's all that's inside there and of course the switch up at top. Now that the top part is back together, I can test this one by holding down the kill switch here. And we're good to go. That one works perfectly. I can look at hold down the kill switch here, mess with this switch here. That one. So the clickety clack noise or is in this one. And this one has bad wheels, so I want the good wheels here and the clickety-clack to stop. That's what I need to do. So let's get you closer. Before we go any deeper, uh, clean this out. It has a little screen that comes out that you can clean and it fits right back in. This is the Tomy version and it runs good but has bad wheels. It is the Radio Shack version. All right, I solved the clickety-clack and why it's go having a problem. It's this gear right here. Uh, this has a little crack in it and there's a spot that's a little wider so as it turns through here, if I pop this into place, uh, as it spins, it does fine until it hits right there. And clickety-clack, it doesn't want to work anymore. That's the problem. This one needs a new gear. But I want this wheel onto this one. This one has to come out. I am going to replace it with this one. Aha! Uh 
Aha. So that came off. And I'll put it on this one. Uh -huh. Let's try that. It's in there. Oh, yeah. This guy goes there. And this guy. So, put this one back together. When it comes down to some tires, some old rubber tires that are just rotting away, there's a solution you can do. Instead of making a mold and recreating, a lot of times you can get away with finding some O-rings that will do the trick. It's not always a perfect fit or match. I have to throw two of them, build it up. Well, that's better than nothing. Hopefully. The only thing to do with this gear is to make another one. So, that's what I'm going to do. Alright, I've taken this gear, this broken gear. As long as this gear is not on the shaft, it doesn't open up at the split and it's fine. It's proportionate correctly. So, I have it glued down to this piece of foam board. I've built a little clay wall out of some non-sulfur based clay and I'm going to try to make a mold of this with some silicone. I want to get these little pieces of string soaked with the silicone before they go inside. Start off really getting it down inside here. Then I can take these, do a couple of strings, kind of poke them down in there. These little strings will help reinforce that center piece. So hopefully I can get a few castings out of it before that little piece breaks off. So I'm using this toothpick in order to smear it, make sure it gets in every tooth. Now I'm going to fill the rest of it up. It's time to see how this came out. Remove the clay. pretty good in there. Looks pretty good. Clean up a little of the flange here hanging that's soaked up underneath. This is the only plastic I have on hand that'll, that'll go off fast enough for me, but also be slow enough that I can work out air bubbles. I think it is cured enough for me to pull it out. I'm gonna see about getting rid of some of this flashing. Looks like the gear to me. I 
the gear is in place. You can see it down here and connected to this shaft. So how does this little guy work? The motor gear contacts this screw thread and it spins this shaft. There's also threads down here on this side of the wheel and these wheels are not connected. They are both idle. They're not connected across. So this one spins making that one turn. It also spins this shaft here and there's another little gear right down here that this is, it's connected to that this one is connected to. And then you have a worm drive here that makes that one move. And this one's on a spring. So when it's turning here, it's going to turn this one one direction. It's going to transfer it over to here and it's going to turn that one in the same direction. There's a angle gear connected to this shaft of this wheel, which connects to my new gear, travels down the shaft and there's a wheel to a right angle to the other wheels. And this one, as long as it's not hanging over the edge, this wheel does not engage. When that wheel does engage, what happens is this is on a spring. And one thing I found is this spring was not, had been sprung, so there wasn't much in it. So I had to pull this spring out to give him more tension on here to get this thing to finally work properly. What happens is this gear moves up, up against towards this. As this thing spins, it, instead of it moves it up, this engaging here, but then engaging into this one, I just tell you, those uh, people in Tomy, they were geniuses. Anyway, let's put this thing back together. Well, there it is, a original working Tomy Dustbot and a working Radio Shack Dustbot. That was a lot of work, but it was fun and it ended up working out great. That gear runs smooth as silk in there. So if you have a Dustbot and you need a gear, well, contact me. I can make one for you or I can make other gears for you. Matter of fact, coming up, this thing. Haven't even touched it yet. I'm sure I'll be making some gears for this guy. So, please, if you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, share, check me out on Facebook, uh, do all those things. So, thanks for watching. Friendly Robot Refurbished!